do. Joining us next is Honorable Francesca Oteng Mensa, all the way from Ghana. She's the member of parliament of Kwabre East constituency in Ashanti region of Ghana. Francesca was 22 years old when she ran for office in 2006, 16. She's not only the youngest among the 275 members of parliament in the seventh parliament, she also became the only member of parliament who had the highest number of votes in both parliamentary and presidential elections in the Whoa. country. Mm. <clears throat> Honorable Francesca is on the Trade, Industry and Tourism Committee and Privileges Committee in the parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us to welcome Honorable Francesca Uteng Mensa. Thank you. Um, permit me to stand on the already established protocol. Um, I'm super excited to be here. Nigeria is more or less like a second home to me. Um, this is my sixth time of coming to Nigeria. I was here about two weeks ago um, for a program organized by the Young Parliamentarians Forum. And I must say it was a very nice um, moment in Nigeria. Um, I've been tasked to share my story and also in sharing my story, I'll link it to how to win election. I must say I'm very excited looking at the number of candidates we have here, about 400 candidates from 91 political parties. But before I go on, I would like to ask all of you to applaud yourself for how far you've been able to come. It is not easy. It is not easy as a young person to take such a bold decision, especially in our part of the world where um, the perception out there is that if you are young, you can't do much. Just as it was stated, um, I entered parliament at the age of 23. I'm currently 25. Yes. Thank you. My story is not all, our, our political system in Ghana is not different from what you have here. Um, we also have the challenge where most of the people in our political sector are the older generation. But I took it upon myself that I'm going to challenge myself and then stand out. And then I took that decision. Taking that decision, I must say, it took me a while. It took me a while before I took that decision because I ask myself, am I ready for the tax ahead of me? Am I ready to change the perception that people have about a young person? Just as it was stated by Honorable Inena, I'm also from the minority, the two minority group. I'm a woman and I'm a youth. So clearing that perception that people have about young ones and have about women was a very difficult tax. But all the same, if I was able to sail through, I believe you can also sail through. Yes. And... Um, most of the things I want to discuss, it has already been established already, but I want to focus more on self-development, which is branding, and then your manifesto or the campaign message, and then as well as uh, what you do on election day. Unfortunately, I have two minutes. I don't know how I can manage that. But when it comes to branding, um, we all have a unique talent. We all have our strength. You ask yourself, what is your strength? What is so different about you that others do not have? I went for uh, my primaries with four strong men. And all these strong men were professionals. And I think one thing that you left in was that when I was running for my primaries, I was in second year in the university. So you can imagine when you go for programs and then they are calling out your um, opponent, their CV is about three pages. And you only have just about three lines of yours being read. You can imagine how humiliating it is. But I still told myself that there is something unique about me and there is something unique about young ones and that is our energy, our strength. So within you, that strength that you probably you might not see that it is worth it is your energy. Make use of your energy. I know a lot of uh, older generation, they might not be even work for about two hours continuous, but you can, am I right? Yes, so make use of your energy. It doesn't necessarily mean that you should have a very unique strength, which probably it's out of reach. Your energy can be your strength. 
So utilize it. That is exactly what I did. And once again, what are you passionate about? You cannot be a jack of all trades. It's not possible. You cannot master in every field. But you should ask yourself, what is one thing that I do that I might not even demand for money or I might not even ask somebody for something in return? And that is something that you should be pushing. If your passion is fighting corruption, you should start advocating that now. If your passion is about gender equality, people should see that about you. That is when you are, you are, you are branding yourself. That is what is called branding. Because if you are going to do everything, people wouldn't see anything different in you. Because the question they will ask is, why would I choose another candidate over you? Or probably, why would I choose somebody in the older generation rather than you? So your branding is key. You shouldn't do everything that everybody is doing. Find time and then ask yourself, what am I passionate about? And your message, um, just as it was stated by um, Debbie, of course, your message should carry on with the problem. What is the problem in your community? And that problem in your community, you should find solutions to it. And you should tell the people that this solution cannot be done by any other person than you. That is the tax you are asking the voter to do. So if you are not able to tax them that this is the, uh, the solution, but there is none other person who can do it than you, they will vote for another person because they feel like that other person can resolve that challenge. And then you're, of course, on election day, my time is up, but on election day, I'll plead with you that if you don't know your electoral laws, start studying them, because that's going to be your tool. On election day, you might be confronted with certain challenges. If you don't know your electoral laws, you might not be able to challenge certain things that happen. For instance, in my uh, constituency, briefly, um, I quite remember I had a challenge whereby there was an old woman who couldn't see properly. But the question is that when she got to the um, polling station, one of the electoral officers asked that she cannot be held by anyone. Fortunately for me, I was there. And because I knew the electoral laws, I, I had the opportunity to challenge the electoral officer that if the person is an older person and cannot see, she has a right to appoint somebody to help her vote. So know your know your electoral laws. If you don't know this, then probably you might not go far. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you very much.